One of Japan's biggest exports is their popular culture, and that's easy to understand. Japan has blessed us with many fictional icons, from Totoro, Godzilla, Hello Kitty, and Pikachu. But of course, Japan's most famous son is the face of Nintendo, and pretty much the face of all video games, Super Mario, whose full name is actually Mario Mario, like his creator Shigeru Miyamoto's actually confirmed that himself. There's many things interesting about Mario, however, I'm sure you can guess what we're here to look at, that name of Mario. What's interesting is how despite being one of the most popular characters to come out of Japan, he has a severely un-Japanese name, a name associated with Italian, though it's also present within Spanish and Portuguese. The name is believed to come from the Latin Marius, which is believed to be linked to the name of the god of war himself, Mars. Luckily, Kratos and Mario are not one and the same. The previous names I mentioned all have roots in Japanese, or are Western adaptations of their Japanese names. Wherever you go around the world, however, whether it be in Japan or an English-speaking country, Mario is always called Mario. So why does such a Japanese icon lack a Japanese name. Mario may be the star of his own series, but his first appearance wasn't in a Mario game. In fact, he wasn't even called Mario when we first met him. We have to go all the way back to 1977 when Shigeru Miyamoto was first employed by Nintendo. This was during the boom of the arcade cabinet business. Nintendo's games were doing well in their native Japan, but struggling in America. One game in particular was Radar Scope, which bombed stateside and left Nintendo with many unused cabinets. Instead of leaving them to waste, it was decided that Nintendo would just program a new game into them, and that job was left to Miyamoto. They knew they wanted something that would appeal to the Western audiences, so to start with, Nintendo tried to get the rights to make a Popeye game. However, that fell through, so Nintendo got to work on making their own characters for the game, which led to the creation of Donkey Kong. And while on the subject of Donkey Kong, let's talk about that name. When I was a kid, I was told it was a typo of Monkey Kong, but apparently it was always meant to be Donkey Kong, with the donkey name meant to provoke the idea of being stubborn like a donkey. Anyway, in this game, we were introduced to not only DK himself, but Pauline, the damsel in distress, and a dungaree clad mustachioed carpenter named, at the time, Jumpman. Why Jumpman? Well, one of the things he did most was jump. The game was a huge success and led to the creation of the platform game as we know it today. Originally, however, he was known as Mr. Video as he was the star of a video game. A key reason behind Mario's name is due to his design. Why would you make a hero of a video game a short guy in dungarees? Definitely not the most conventional looking hero. Well, if you look at early video game characters, you'll notice they aren't the most dynamic bunch. Pac-Man is basically just a circle. These designs were made made more of necessity than for making a character look good. A great example of this is Crash Bandicoot. Real Bandicoots aren't bright orange, but Crash was made orange so he would stand out more against the dark coloured backgrounds. Video game character design works in conjunction with level design, and of course what tech you have at your disposal at the time. When Mario was first created, games didn't look how they look now. Creators were working with 8-bit computers, meaning they had to find ways to make characters look unique and not just a pile of pixels. Mario's creator Miyamoto has explained why Mario looks the way he does. The moustache and big nose were added to help define his face, and the hat was added as hair was hard to create in 8-bit. Miyamoto's other big creation is a keen hat wearer too, maybe more on him and his princess another time. And the dungarees were added so Mario's arms and body didn't mesh into one big lump of pixels. The creativity that had to be used due to the lack of technology seems to be the key. Mario's design was a means to an end so players could completely understand what Mario was doing on the screen. All of this led to Mario looking rather Italian. I don't know if that stereotype of Italians existed before Mario, or if Mario pioneered it, but if you google Italian stereotype, moustaches are abound. In fact, it doesn't take long for Mario himself to appear in Google Images when searching Italian stereotype. This might seem like a good enough reason as to why he has that name. He looks Italian and is meant to be Italian, so an Italian name like Mario would work. However, we also have a much more concrete answer to this too. In fact, we have a real Mario the Super Mario is named after, that being Mario Sagali. Like I said earlier, Nintendo wanted Donkey Kong to be a huge hit in the US which it certainly was, and in the fallout of all this, Nintendo set up an American HQ in Seattle, Washington, renting a warehouse owned by Mario Sagale. The story goes that one day Sagale stormed into the building demanding overdue rent. It was here the Nintendo employees realised how much Sagale looked like their Jumpman. He had the moustache too. It was thanks to the irate rant of the landlord that Jumpman became Mario, the name we all know him by today. So, why doesn't Mario have a Japanese name? It seems to be an amalgamation of a lot of things. Of course, Mario's design and and names seem to be very intertwined. It makes sense for a stereotypically looking Italian character to have an Italian name, and the fact that someone barged into their offices with an Italian name seemed like a blessing in disguise. However, I think there is another key reason Mario is named what he is. Despite being a Japanese character and beloved in Japan, he wasn't made with Japan in mind. Nintendo wanted to take off in the West via Donkey Kong and Jumpman, and to do this they had to look into Western design. Miyamoto has even stated that he enjoys Western comics, and it's not hard to see that in 
Mario's design, it's not a stretch to see the similarities between the likes of Mario and Asterix, or even Captain Haddock. Mario doesn't fit the conventions of traditional Japanese pop culture. He's not very anime looking in layman's terms. Like I said, initially Donkey Kong was to be a Popeye game, and in some of Jumpman's earliest designs you can still see that Popeye inspiration. With the West in mind, a Western design was created, with a Western name needing to replace Jumpman, and with thanks to their landlord Mario Segale, the name Mario was cemented and it's that Italian name that belongs to a Japanese character now known throughout the entire world. Now if only their landlord was called Luigi instead. Poor Luigi. These are the names of the amazing people who help keep Name Explained running, so a huge thank you to all these awesome people who support Name Explained financially through Patreon. It takes just a small amount of $2 a month to not only get your name here, but get access to the weekly Patreon exclusive Name Explained rewards. Thank you.